If you've been keeping up with our spring farm cleanup series, you've seen the barn demolition followed by the barn burning. Today we're going to clean up some of this brush and scraggly trees around the old home site. We'll start on this old maple that fell maybe a year or maybe even two years ago. We mowed around it last summer with a 10-foot flex wing. You can check out that episode as well. And I had pledged to myself that we weren't going to mow around that brush again. Now all of this cleanup took place over a two-day period in early February. There was just so much action of different types of projects that we just didn't feel like we could squeeze it into a single episode. No, Randall, I don't think it does have any suspension adjustment. Seems to be the springs very similar to the 1 Series. However, it does ride a lot smoother and nicer than a 1025R. Look at that uneven load. The clamps are at a totally different angle. Love the two clamps of the Artillion Grapple. This little saw works like a champ. Pretty clear to me that this is going to become my trim saw uh, full time. We used it yesterday at Randall's house. I haven't changed the battery. I saw it a good bit with it yesterday at Randall's house, but I still have half a battery left even after that and what I've sawed here. Now this is a d dead tree. It's, I don't know, maybe a couple years ago, maybe even more. So it's pretty uh, dry and sometimes they get hard and it's kind of hard on the, the saw, hard on the chain. It, it dulls the chain faster. But I think I'm about as big as I can get with this one. I think I'm going to get the other saw out to saw the bigger stuff. This uh, 362 has proven incredibly easy to start. There's no fumbling with it. I'm, I'm always used to, you know, pull it till it fires and then change the choke, turn it off, whatever. And then once you get it running, be real careful with the choke. There just isn't any of that with this one. You uh, push down to get it in this start position and then you pull. Just pull till it runs. Now this is the type of thing that might bend up a weaker grapple. Notice how we're pulling sideways on it. That big log has a lot of leverage. Randall's pulling backwards and it's, it's twisting on the grapple. The Artillion grapple is made out of 3 8 inch AR400 steel. I don't see how they got it as light as they did. It's not the lightest weight grapple on the market, but it's the lightest weight for a 3 8 inch grapple that I've seen. I think we got most of this one uh you know, small enough that Randall can get get it picked up. So we'll start trimming some of these little cedars here behind you, Christy, and and we're eventually going to try to take this big half dead tree down. It's leaning toward the power lines. We're going to have to hook chains to it and everything to to get it down. We took a rope to it if Danny were here, but this is the farm. We don't have ropes, so we'll hook chains. chains. <laughs> Randall's getting pretty good with that grapple. Yep. It doesn't take him long, but he's had to. He's had to learn some of the technique. It's a little bit different than, than using a regular loader bucket or using a backhoe even, uh, but, but he's catching on quick. Uh, you would get a little bit more than that, wouldn't you? Yeah, I probably would have uh, tried to got another log or so there, but I told him a few minutes ago not to worry about the size of the load because before long you can fiddle with it trying to get the biggest load, you could have made another trip. So I told him just kind of get what you can get and go down there. Now, if you're making really long trips like we were yesterday to the uh, way back in the woods, well, that's different. But here we're just going a little while to the fire over there. Amber! 
Why are you cutting those off? I guess I would have carried that whole tree. I shouldn't have cut it up, should I? I would have had it picked up before anybody could have started sawing on it. Let's see if we can get it. Well, I cut it in half now. Oh. You got it. As I've said before, there are pluses and minuses to each type of grapple. The root rake or clamshell type grapples that you've seen us use from Precision Manufacturing do a great job of raking along the ground. But a load like this, I think would be pretty difficult to pick up with that style of grapple. The artillion here with the longer bed on the bottom seems to handle it well. Randall went off to get the Case 580, so I decided I would put Johnny 2 to work on this tree. This is one of those projects where I really do recognize that the 270B backhoe is a good bit stronger than the 260B that's on the 1025R. It would have taken another minute or two probably to have used the 260B to get that little tree out. Not a big deal really in this case. I just mention it because I know a lot of you are trying to make a decision between a 1 series and a 2 series and I'm just doing whatever I can to, to help that. Randall's using the Case 580 backhoe here to remove some of these small trees. Now, these could have been removed by Johnny too, of course. So why did we choose this approach? Well, once again, like you've probably seen before when we're on the farm, we try to optimize the usage of each particular piece of equipment. While either backhoe would get the trees out, Johnny 2's grapple is a lot better for carrying them to the fire. I've heard of folks buying two identical tractors when they need a second tractor. They say, hey, I like the first one so much, I'm going to buy another one just like it. I personally wouldn't choose that approach. I'd prefer my second tractor to have different capabilities, different strengths and weaknesses than my first tractor. Then, when working together, you can optimize the whole project. Now, this is something I can't do very well with Little Johnny's. Randall's using the leverage of the tree itself to push the stump out. The little Johnnies just don't have enough reach, especially when considering that super cool extender hoe. It would have taken a lot of digging for me to get that stump out. Meanwhile, Dad arrived. He decided he'd give Johnny Two a try with that grapple. I think this is the very first load he ever tried to grab with it. you can pick it up, but Johnny may be able to. When I was a kid, a project like this just seemed like a lot of work. Now it seems totally different to me. These times spent with family are, well, they're just not replaceable. I'd so much rather work on something like this when I visit than just sit on the couch and watch TV. I mean, this is generating memories. So many times when we're working on a project like this, we say, remember that time that we, yeah, fill in the blank. For example, the last barn that we demolished together, I think I was about 10 years old. Although I admit that being away from home, I think I missed two other opportunities to demolish and burn a barn. I suppose those missed opportunities make these times even more valuable to me. I don't know what your family situation is, have no idea. 
but I would encourage you to use whatever time you have together with your family. Don't spend it fighting over silly stuff. Do your very best to enjoy your time together. root out there to the right seems awfully big for that little tree. My dad's 87 years old. He's never operated a grapple before until today. And I didn't give him any instruction other than I said, here, this, use this button to, to handle the clamps. And don't tell me you can't learn when you're older. I think it operates, the controls are the same as Johnny. Easy enough! Yeah, this is, uh, I'm a little jerky because it's got so much power. <laughs> the handle says it's really loose. Yeah, it does kind of, it's older, but hey, pretty amazing. Now we're preparing to take down the rest of this tree. Now I must admit, I'm a little bit nervous about this. Danny, my tree cutting expert friend, has always warned me about trees that are rotted, dead and maybe hollow. It's really hard to predict what they're like on the inside. This one's leaning away from us, right toward the power lines. Tom had called the power company and tried to get them to take it down, but they didn't seem interested, at least at the time. I didn't get the chain hooked to it quite like, well, maybe I would have preferred, but I couldn't see an easier way to do it. Okay, well it's down. Nobody got hurt. Power line's fine. What is it, quite the direction I was aiming for? but it's plenty good. It's not taking Dad long to begin to get more aggressive with it. This is one of a couple things you have to learn when you're used to working with larger equipment. When working with the big stuff, often you have to be very gentle to keep from well, breaking something you didn't intend to break. If you're that gentle with these little guys, you won't get anything done. The other thing that I notice with operators that are used to larger equipment is that they have trouble getting used to the concept of using a lot of throttle. Larger machines will have plenty of oomph and plenty of hydraulics at a low throttle, maybe even idle. But that's not the case with these little machines.
one more big tree to fall here. It looks like it's going to be a little bit easier. It's leaning away from the power lines. Randall's wife, Caitlin, and their son, Troy, have got here just in time to see the action. There, that worked just like it was planned. This one was even more rotten in the middle, but I didn't saw as far. I didn't let the back cut get near as close to the face cut before I had Randall pull on it. I think the lesson I learned here was let the tractor do a little bit more of the work. Troy's getting a little bit of a tractor ride with his great-grandfather. That's pretty special. I never met any of my great-grandfathers, but I do remember one great-grandmother. We'll use Casey's equivalent of Ken's bolt-on hooks to get that stump hauled off. I don't think Ken makes any quite that big. Now I want you to remember this big log. You'll see it later in the episode. We'll revisit it and have a talk about it. We'll take this bird's eye view of Mom trying to get Troy off the tractor. We'll see how that goes. See if she can coax him off. It's not going so well, is it? Do you blame him? Okay, here's that big log again. Randall had laid it outside by the fire so that we could put it on top right at the end, hoping it would burn. I grabbed it with Johnny too, but I could only pick it up about maybe six or eight inches off of the ground. I pushed it forward against the pile and then used that lift and curl, lift and curl, lift and curl trick that I've shown you on other episodes to get it all the way to the max lift height. Now I'm trying to get it off the grapple without it rolling back and hitting the tractor. I just keep working at it dumping and pushing and up oh, there it goes is it gonna roll back on me I'll hold the grapple there a little longer just to make sure success I wasn't actually sure I could put that up there guys this has been a big project yeah it has dad you got your first use of that grapple yeah I did how'd you get along it's fine it's a lot of fun good to, good to pick up them limbs with yeah a lot easier than by hand. <laughs> yeah, always before, you would be in the backhoe and we had to pick up by hand. That's how it always worked. <laughs> That's right. I never noticed that. <laughs> okay. Hey, it's been great. Randall, Tom, thanks for, thanks for all the help. We got her cleaned up. It's been fun. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor, Tractor Time with Tim. Tim.